Welcome to another episode of Math and Magic with Jen. We're continuing our study on fractions, but this time we're going to look at comparing fractions and we're going to look at tape diagrams again and we're even going to try out some number lines. So let's see what we've got going on today. So when we're talking about comparing fractions, what we want to know is which one is bigger or which is smaller or are they equal? So um, let's just say, for example, we had um, which one is larger, one fourth or three eighths? Now, for most adults, what they would do is find a common denominator and then compare it that way. But we don't want to just jump into common denominators. Maybe this is third grade, where it's the end of third grade. We're just learning about what a fraction represents. How can you decide which of these is bigger or smaller using maybe tape diagrams or picture models or... Um, fraction tiles, whatever it is. So that's what we're going to look at right now. Okay, so comparing fractions with tape diagrams are definitely the, the most popular. I'm laughing because um, it is difficult to get a pretty picture by hand. Um, so with that being said, uh, they're great because they're relatively simple to draw. Uh, the key for using them in this scenario is you need to stack two tape diagrams up and down and they need to be the same length. So I know it's not perfect, but imagine that these are exactly the same length. I cut the first one to represent one fourth. I cut the second one to represent a third. And you can see that a third is further down the line than a fourth. So this one is bigger than a fourth. Now talking about inequality symbols, um, this one is less than, how I always remember is L for less than, and if you scrunch the L over, it looks like that symbol. And then, of course, the other one is greater than. Um, so let's see another example that I have here. We're trying to decide which one's bigger, one half or three fifths. So notice I have a different numerator other than one. So uh, for this first drawing, I've got my tape diagram. I cut it into two. I shade one. For the other tape diagram that is the same length, I cut it into fives, and then I shade three out of five. Now, I will say this is, again, because we are eyeballing where to cut it, it can be a little bit trickier. And so this is where that online tool that I showed in the last video, um, the mathlearningcenter.org um, slash functions, that one will stack to uh, right at the same time and it's pretty easy to see. There it is. <laughs> it's like I knew what was coming up next. So what's really, really nice um, about this tool is that when you draw a tape diagram, it will actually draw the exact same size right below it as far as the length is concerned, and then it will, um, you can shade it in. I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and show you what this looks like. So I'm here, knowledgelearningcenter.org. Um, slash fractions. Sorry, I'm not very good at reading URLs, but there you have it. It's the same one that was on the previous screen. Um, so this, what we've got down here across the bottom is a where we can choose our shape. So although I know circles are really important to show fractions, it turns out tape diagrams are a little bit easier and I'll show you why. So here I'm going to grab a tape diagram and you can see it's asking how many parts. So if we were doing, um, let's say we were doing the one half and the three fifths. Okay, so I go ahead and I cut it into two, and then I'm gonna go grab another one, and this time I'm gonna cut it into fifths, but I'm also gonna move it, and here's the other thing. You can move it right below it, or you can actually stick them together. So that's also a nice way to compare fractions. Okay, um, this little button along the bottom that's got like a little, uh, it's got the fraction little tab. If you select it, you'll see that it'll tell you, hey, we have zero out of two and we have zero out of five. And if I come grab this um, ink blot, I can shade one half and then I can keep the same color as I go to the next one. I can choose a different one. And as I go do each one, it says what we've got, which is three fifths. Now, the reason why I prefer tape diagrams Number one, um, they are easier typically to compare. Two, um, they are simple to draw. <laughs> and three, they look like fraction tiles, which we're gonna see in just a second. If I draw circles, which yes, this will allow me to draw a circle. Let me move it over to the side. 
So there's my one half and I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, let's try that again. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink it, okay? And then if I go grab another one and now I'm comparing fifths. So here, um, if I wanna compare one half and three fifths, what I'm going to see now this one, you can definitely see which one's larger, but there are some fractions where it's harder to see when you're comparing them in circle form, which one is bigger or smaller. And so that's why typically I'll go for tape diagrams over circles, but that's your personal choice. If you like circles better and you want to roll with it, that's fine. Okay. Now, going back to um, our notes, what I mentioned just a minute ago is that these tape diagrams look like fraction tiles. So let me remind you what those are. So in my first fraction video, um, I showed you guys fraction tiles. So fraction tiles are basically a tape diagram of unit length one, and they're made out of hard plastic, and they have um, certain fractions that are already built, so like a third, a fourth, a fifth, and so on. So what you can actually do if you have these tools in your classroom or as you're working with your student at home, um, what you can do is basically what we just did. If I wanted to compare one half and three fifths, I'd grab the pink one half tile and then three of those one fifths, stack them next to each other, and then you can see which one is bigger. So here, three fifths is bigger than a half. You could also write that a half is less than three fifths. Fifths, I said fifths. Stupid. Okay. So what's going to happen also is that you can do this with one four, someone eights. The only bad news about these fraction tiles is that there are denominators missing and they only go up to 12. Whereas the online tool, you can actually have tape diagrams in whatever size you want. So if you want to do 50 parts, like a denominator of 50, you can actually do it. So it's a little bit more flexible. All right. The other technique I'm going to show you is number lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a number line from zero to one. One, because we're talking about one object, one unit, one whole part that we're chopping up. Okay. So this is nice because it um, gets students to think about what um, size looks like based on like a ruler. So here, what we would do is if we wanted to graph um, thirds, then we would want to cut our number line into three equal pieces. Now, what that really means is that we're going to have three spaces. So there's one space, there's two spaces, and then our third space or piece. Okay, so I have my zero, and oh, by the way, zero is the same thing as zero thirds one third, two thirds, and then one, which is the same thing as three thirds. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you this with some other denominators. So for example, if you want to compare a half and three fifths, just like we've been doing, we'd have one number line that's from zero to one, cut it into two equal pieces. And then, of course, we've got zero over two, one over two or a half, and then one is two over two. To do three fifths, we would try our best to have five equal pieces. So here, I'm gonna go one piece, two piece, three piece, four piece, and then of course our fifth piece. So this is our five fifths, and this is our zero fifths. And then, if we were comparing one fifths and a half, we can see that one fifth is less than a half. If we were comparing two fifths and a half, then we could also say, oh yeah, two fifths is also less than a half. However, three fifths, this is a longer piece than this one. So here, three fifths is in fact bigger than a half. I'm gonna go ahead and show you one by hand again to start to finish. So what you'd want to do is I think it's best to use two distinct number lines because it gets a little bit confusing if you put it in fourths and eights on top of each other. So I'm just going to start by having my zero and my one and then right below it, I'll do another one. They're supposed to be the same length, so do your best. Do your best. Okay, so if I'm going to try and show where three fourths is, I'm going to go ahead and cut this into fourths. So we want it into four equal pieces. Okay. So let's see. This will be in two equal pieces. And then if I cut this one and this one, I think I get one, two, three, four. 
Beautiful. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and count fourths. So this is one fourth. This is two fourths. This is three fourths. And of course, this is four fourths. So our three fourths is right here. Now, three eighths. I got to try and cut this into eighths. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So I've got, there's half. Each of these would need to be cut into four. So let's go ahead and we're going to eyeball one, two, three, four. One, three, four. Again, we're just guesstimating to the best of our ability. If you've got a student that likes things really exact, then maybe you already have number lines already drawn. Um, at least from zero to one so that it's easier to mark. Um, and then they can also use a ruler to try and figure out exactly where it is along the line. So you're going to have to decide how exact or not you want things to be. Okay, going back to what I just wrote here, I have zero all the way through one, marking out eights. Here's three eights. So as we can see, three-fourths is larger than three eights. And yes, I'm sure you guys knew that answer already. But remember, we're talking about nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds. Um, some will be really good at fractions. Some are going to need some extra help. So here's another option. So we've talked about tape diagrams. Boom. We've talked about piles. We've talked about number lines. And I've got one last one to talk about, which is a modification of the number lines. So I suggest using this. After you've been comparing fractions for probably a couple weeks in the classroom, right? Maybe a week, two weeks in the classroom, your students are like, oh, can I do it faster? Is there a faster way? I'm not saying everyone would want a faster way, but you might have, let's say, five, ten students who are getting a little bit bored and maybe want to have another option under their belt. So here we go. This is called closer to zero versus closer to one. This still uses number lines, but it uses the idea of zero and one written as fractional units. Okay, so the idea here is we're going to write a number line. We're going to go zero to one. And we're curious about that three-fourths again. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm not going to mark this number line out in fourths. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, okay, zero is the same thing as zero fourths. One is the same thing as four fourths. And hey, even if you wanted to, you could even add in a half in there and show what a half is. A half would be two fourths, but I'm going to leave a half off right now. All right. So the question is, is three fourths closer to zero fourths or do we think three fourths is closer to four fourths? So really what we're looking at is that numerator. Is that numerator of three closer to zero or is that numerator of three closer to four? It's closer to four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of write three fourths here. I, it doesn't have to be exact, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna use the arrow to mean that it's closer to one. Okay, let's do this again. Here's zero, here's one. And this time we're working with three eighths. Okay, so what I want to do here is I'm going, okay, in eights world, zero would be zero eights, one would be eight eights. Okay, so do we think three eights is closer to zero eights, or do we think three eights is closer to eight eights? So is three closer to zero, or is three closer to eight? It's closer to zero. So it's somewhere over here, I'm just going to randomly kind of throw it in, and I'm just going to write an arrow saying that it's closer to zero. Well, whichever fraction is closer to one is the bigger one. Whichever one is closer to zero is the smaller one. So in this instance, we have that three eighths is smaller than three fourths. Three fourths is bigger than three eighths. So it's up to you. Again, I would not say that this is the method I would go to out of the gate, like first day of comparing fractions. But it could be really good if you've already been doing it for a week or two. Some of the students are getting bored, like, oh, I get it. Here's another method for them to get excited about. So let's try one more. Now, here's the cool part about this method. I would not want to draw tape diagrams that have 12 pieces and 20 pieces. I don't know about you, but that does not sound like a good use of time. But what I can do is think about it with the closer to zero, closer to one method. So if I'm trying to figure out 5 12 so this is going to be my 5 twelfths, and this one's going to be my 11 20ths. 
So in twelfths world, zero would be zero twelfths. And one would be 12 twelfths. We could also talk about what a half would be if we've had these discussions about equivalent fractions, which is my next video. Um, but here it could be 6 twelfths. That's fine. You could throw that in if you want. Or you could leave it off. For those who want to leave it off, you can just leave it off. Okay? All right. So 5 twelfths. Is 5 twelfths going to be closer to 0? Or is 5 twelfths going to be closer to 12 twelfths? So 5 should be closer to zero than it is to 12. So thinking about a number line, five should be closer to zero than it is to 12. So it's gonna be somewhere over here, not exact, but I'm just gonna write an arrow showing that it's closer to zero. And now we're gonna do the same thing with 20ths. Zero is the same thing as zero 20ths. One is the same thing as 20 20ths. I'm gonna leave off a half right now, but we'll talk about it in just a second. So I wanna show you that you could still do this without talking about that halfway point. Okay, so is 11, is 11 closer to 20 or is 11 closer to zero? Well, 11 is 11 away from zero and 11 is only nine away from 20. So that's saying that 11 20th is right in here. It's closer to one. Okay, so if it's closer to one and this was closer to zero, then that's got to mean that this one's bigger. So 11 20th is bigger than five twelfths. Now, before I leave this example completely, two things I want to talk about. Um, putting the one half is optional. You might like students to do that just so that they can get an idea of where that middle spot is. So is 11 past the middle or is 11 before the middle? So that could be a bonus. Um, the other thing is not all problems can be solved using this method. So as a teacher, you'd have to create problems to be solved this way. And how you do that is you need one on one side of a half and the other bigger than a half. So you'd have to choose fractions where one of them is less than a half and the other is bigger than a half. Um, otherwise, the other methods would have to, to be the way you go, where you use tape diagrams, where you use um, uh, fraction tiles and all the good stuff. So what I'm saying is, is that like when I was showing you guys a third versus a fourth, a third versus a fourth are both smaller than than half so they're both closer to zero so that's not going to work so this only works for problems where one is on this side of a half and the other is the other side of a half okay but it still could be fun for kind of crazy denominators you could create a denominator of 50 a denominator of you know 200 so you could get kind of wacky in there for those students that are wanting more of a challenge all right for us, we're done today. So try out those methods for comparing fractions. See what you think. See what appeals to you. Um, try get in there, dig in there, and have fun with math and get your students excited. All right, that's it. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.